Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial on BitCutter. In this video, I'm going to introduce you how you can uh, process audio that is coming from an audio source inside the AUM. Of course, you can apply that to other a AUV free hosts as well. So, so far we have used BitCutter in previous videos with um, files with waveform, which is one way to go. But of course, it gets um, far more interesting when you have different type of audio sources. So let's um, go through the example. So let's say we are inside the UM. Let's create an audio channel. And let's select as a, an audio source um, uh, iSIM from Arturia, which uh, is one of my preferred synth. So let's um, open it up, connect it to the keyboard, and let's see if these, um, let's choose a preset really, and let's listen. So maybe an arpeggio will do. Yeah, that sounds nice. Okay, so let's hide this keyboard. Now let's create also a MIDI channel. And you could do this in a completely different way, but I'm doing. I'm going to use Atom in this case, the second version, to drive um, ISIM in terms of playing some notes. So let's maximize this. Let's add um, a couple of notes, like so. There you go. Let's um, um, activate the clip. Let's click play to listen, first of all, to what we have. Oops, let's connect uh, Atom to ISIM. Okay, perfect. Now let's add beat cutter. So let's search for the audio instance. Okay, here we are. So let's open beat cut, maximize the window, reset it to a default preset. Let's click play and we should not hear anything. Now the first thing I want you to notice is that here on the bottom left, there are numbers one, two, three, four. These are the four input channels okay so some of you have asked me uh, how i connect uh, channels input channels output channels to input buses and output buses so in this video we're going to go through how you can connect an input input channel to an input bus so as you can see here there's something on the first input channel number one you see a green highlighted there so we know there is something that is being played because we have ISIM which is driven by Atom. Okay, so let's go to, to the input now. Let's select input bus number one. Previously, we have connected that input bus to a um, to an audio source type file, and we have selected a file like this. This time, instead of using a file, we'll go to channel one here. And you see immediately there is um, a source, an audio source coming through. There is signal. And as you can see, you have four channels here. Okay. And then we move to trigger and we do what we have done um, in previous video. We increase the, sensitive, the sensitiveness of the trigger. Okay, until it reaches to the top. And now we are starting to see some audio coming through and being recorded. So we have, so we have audio coming from uh, um, ISIM, driven by Atom, and it comes through channel number one, and that channel number one is connected to input bus number one. Now you can apply this concept um, um, to other input buses. For example, you could say, let's select uh, input bus number three, and we still connect that to channel number one. And we still have the trigger up, and let's click play. In this case, you have the same channels going to two input buses, triggering two triggers. As you can see, um, we are playing on, on the first step and also on the first step. And this starts to create a little bit of rhythm, okay? So in, sim in a similar way, what you can do is now, going back to AUM, create another audio channel, okay? Let's bring in uh, ISM again, like so. Let's connect it to Atom, so we use the same pattern, why not? 
let's choose uh, a different preset and different arpeggio. So, um, I don't know, um, this pink machine, why not? Let's try that one. And now, instead of adding bit cutter in a normal way as another instance, let's add it through the multi-bus audio uni instances because that is what is supported through bit cutter. So in that case, you see bit cutter reference to the first audio channel. Let's click on it. It will say two because it will use the second channel. So if we go back to bit cutter now, we go to the input. Let's select, for example, channel number five input, sorry, input bus number five, and let's connect that to channel number two, where we have the second instance of bit cutter. We are going to increase the sensitiveness of the trigger, so we know that it will get triggered. And what we're going also to do, we are going to disconnect the output here because we don't want to listen to anything going through this, um, this instance of uh, um, bit cutter. So let's go back to the main and let's click play. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully you can see now how um, in connecting input channels is possible to one or more input buses. And you can see also how you can use different input channels up to four in this case and take audio from four different sources inside AUM. So this gives you a lot of um, possibilities in terms of creating experimentation with sound. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the, the video. I hope this makes sense. And uh, also, the, before I go, actually, I wanted to show you, um, let's take the volume down, that you see the operation on the second channel as well. So if I click play here, you see the first two channel coming through. So input channel, second channel, okay? Because I have the two ISM instance. And as well, if I re-enable the output, perhaps a little below, like though, like so, you see also the output channel stereo one and two here on the far bottom right. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the example. So it's an introduction how you can use input channels and how you can connect them to input buses. We have seen also how to use audio sources coming through uh, in this case, AUM as an additional audio unit instance. And you can see now how you can start to create a bit of a rhythm. Okay, and see you next time. Bye.